the woodland. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Wake up, huh? Shep's raising the roof out there. Yeah. Uh, get the rifles, Ellis. Better take a look out there and see what's going on. It's that cougar again. Shep's running him off. It's hard to convince a man that his is only one side of the story when he's got a prowling cat stalking his sheep at night. But there is another side, as you'll find out later on. Now, a ranger tries to be fair to all parties involved in an argument, that is, as long as the persons involved are within the law. Many times I wish I were as wise as Solomon because these situations get sticky. Stumpy and I were passing through the lush grass of the Shady Mountains a while ago. It was a mild and windless day, and the two of us just kind of lazed our horses along, not caring how soon we got to our destination as long as we could enjoy the blessings of the perfect day. Blackie, what's the big hurry? How come you're building up such a head of steam, speedball? <laughs> speedball? <laughs> Why, if Blackie were going any slower, he'd be standing still. <laughs> and that'll be too fast for me this day, Sonny. Oh, feel that warm sun burning down into my old bones. Why, its warmth is going clean through to the marrow. Yeah, I know what you mean. What do you say we wall up by that big rock and get off and take a snooze in the sun? That's a right smart idea, sonny. Because if I don't get off and snooze, I'll fall off. <laughs> I know. You've been weaving in the saddle every now and then. <laughs> Don't you ever miss seeing anything? You know an old walrus like me likes to sun himself. Whoa, Storm. Whoa there, Blackie. There's a good spot. Even this big old rock is heated up nice and cozy. Bill, I don't hardly remember a day like this for a long time now. Yeah, windless days are hard to come by in the mountain country. Especially this early in the year. I feel like I could sleep here for two days. So don't bother me. <laughs> It'll get pretty chilly at sunset. Yeah. yeah, maybe the sun will stand still like it did in the Old Testament. <sighs> Maybe it will, old friend. But even if it doesn't, just relaxing here, enjoying the Lord's wonderful day, gives a man warmth for his body and food for his soul. Forget it. I always 
always bark like cougar hounds when they sleep. Ah, oh, you old faker. Say, what's old George doing around here with his hounds? He isn't hunting rabbits, that's for sure. Nope, he ain't. Maybe we ought to go have a talk with old George since he's hunting on a reservation. Animals are protected in this area. I hope he missed. Yeah, so do I. Sounds like it's time to get concerned. Let's go. George. Yeah, howdy, Bill. Stumpy. Did you miss? Yeah, I reckon. Now what makes you think you missed? Yeah, dogs are still gone. Sounds like the cougars heading for the high country in the rocks. Yeah, I reckon. You expect to continue the hunt? I reckon. You know, of course, that you're on a cougar reservation. Yeah, I reckon. Then you know you're breaking the law. I reckon. Don't you have anything else to say besides I reckon? George is a man of few words. Well, George? You picked up the cougar trail off the reservation. Dogs don't know where reservation is. Who are you working for, George? Elmer and Ellis. Sheep raisers must be having cat trouble. Yeah. You better have a talk with them. George, you're welcome here any time, but not to hunt cougar. Now, call your hounds and leave the protected area. No more hunting cougar around here, you understand? I reckon. Hello, Elmer. Ellis. Howdy, Bill. Stumpy. Howdy. You fellas on social or business call? Business, Elmer. We haven't done anything wrong that we know of. You hired old George to hunt the cougar that's been bothering your sheep. Well, what's wrong with that, anyway? Nothing in itself, but we caught old George hunting where cougar are protected. Well, is that our fault? No, it isn't. We've told you that you're to report a troublesome cougar to us, and we'll take care of it. Old George almost got himself in a jam because he forgot about the cougar reservation. Now, Bill, we don't allow your cougar reservation's legal. Oh? How do you figure that? Well, Alice here, he's got considerable schooling, you know. He's been studying up, and he figured you ain't got a legal foot to stand on. That's right. That's very interesting. You're aware that I always have our attorney check these things out when we make a big change to make sure I'm legally sound. I thought you had, but I sure would like to test this in court. Be my guest. Yeah, you can take that attitude, because it ain't your sheep that's being attacked by that there cougar. What do you care, anyway? That isn't true, and you know it, Elmer. And you also know that I'm concerned about the mounting deer population in my district. A cougar will kill a deer for food, and where there are cougars in sufficient quantity, the deer population is kept normal and healthy. Well, that's all well and good for them hunters. But sure is rough and not sheep, man. How many sheep have you lost this year to the cougar? Well, enough. Come on! Elmer, don't jump around like a frog on a hot rock. How many? Well, we lost... A... Go on, Pa. Tell him. Well, none so far this year, but we lost three last year. That was because you had the old sheepdog last year. Chef Bear was too young to know much. Ain't that right, Elmer? Well, yeah, it's right, but this thing's always a worrying us. So are the mounting deer. And they worried us to the tune of $10,000 last year. $10,000? For what? For feed. We wouldn't have had to give them if the herd size had been normal. Wow. And that's taxpayers' money, too. You said a mouthful, Ellis. But if you multiply the loss of every ranch in the Shady River Valley, that amount to something, too. Have you ever seen a herd of starving deer move in and eat everything they can bite off? No, don't believe I have. Well, the damage they do makes a cougar look like an innocent bystander. <laughs> There 
There you are, Storm, old boy. You're through work for another day. Eat up, and I'll let you out in the pasture to roll after a while. Bill, uh, I've been thinking about that cougar. Okay, shoot. Appears to me that the cat heckling Elmer's sheep must be an old one. Just ain't fast enough anymore to catch a deer, even a sick one. You're thinking about old three toes? <laughs> Could be. As far as I know, he ain't dead. With his fame, we'd sure hear about it if somebody bagged him. Yeah, you may have a point there, old timer. How would you get him? I don't rightly know, sonny. I'd have to give that one a good think. <laughs> he won't fall for the baited cage trick again. How long ago was it that we dumped him out in the Big Six country? Yeah, that was quite a spell back. Three, maybe four years. Four sounds more like it. <laughs> Old Three Toes sure was mad while he was in that cage. He sure was. Maybe he was mad at himself for being so stupid and falling for the trick. You know, I think it was. Because there ain't man or dog that can catch that rascal. He'll fight a pack of dogs and whoop them to a pulp. If you try to shoot him, well, by the time the bullet gets to where you aim, go three toes someplace else. <laughs> and now he's getting old and tired and slow, just like me. This could turn out to be quite a match between two old-timers, huh, Stumpy? Just might be, young feller. We've both been around a long time, had lots of experience, learned by our mistakes. I wonder who learned the most. You were the cougar. That's a good question. Of course, uh, we don't know if it's old three toes. Let's go back out to Elmer's in the morning and look for trail sign, huh? Good idea. Now, I'll tell you one thing, Sonny. What's that? I ain't shooting my mouth off about catching old three toes. You're not sure you can do it? To catch that rascal, you not only have to live like a cougar, you have to think like one. <laughs> I'll be glad to take you out on the range where we had the sheep the other night. How can you be sure this is an old cougar, and three toes in particular? Well, we can't. Till we find the trail sign, I'll know as soon as I see it. Well, he ain't bothered us none since the other night. Old George must have run him out. If it's all three toes, he'll be back. What do you say we get going and find out who this cat is? Before we expend a lot of energy figuring out how we're going to catch him. My horse is all saddled and ready to go. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Come on, Storm. Come on, Blackie. Come on, girl. Whoa, girl. Oh, there, Blackie. Whoa, Storm. Easy, boy. Well, this here's the place where we bedded down the sheep. Cat must have been up there in them rocks. Yeah, I don't rightly think so, young fella. You don't? Nope. Your dog wouldn't have sounded off if the critter were that far away. Even downwind, it wouldn't. Oh, I guess that's right. Well, where do you think he was talking from? Well, I guess right over yonder by them scrub trees. There's long grass and even a couple of boulders. All right, let's have a look. Come on, boy. Say, how did old Three Toes get his name anyway? I don't know, Sonny. Must have dropped a rock on his foot when he was a youngster. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. As long as Three Toes has been in this area, he's had three toes on his right front paw. That sure is mighty interesting. Oh. Oh, girl. Oh, Rocky. Wow, there's a cougar track big as life. But he's got four toes, not three. <laughs> How much do you know about cougars, Ellis? Well, practically nothing, I guess. Don't be offended, but cougars have four toes on their hind feet and five on the front. They do? Really? That's right, young feller. Boy, I sure don't know much about cougars. Wow, nothing at all, I guess. Now, don't fret about it. You'll learn. Now, uh, here's the track we've been looking for right here in the damp ground. Front feet this time. Yep. <laughs> what do you see? <laughs> well, five on this one. Only three on the other. It, it was old three toes all right. Ah, 
absolutely and positively, for sure. Thanks for showing us that, Earlis. Tell your dad we'll get hot on Three Toes Trail first thing in the morning. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't leave me behind now after getting this much of a taste of the hunt. Please let me go along. What do you say, old-timer? This is your hunt. Throw right with me. In fact, it might come in handy. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Stumpy. There's only one thing. Oh, I I'm sorry I got nasty to you before. I, I really am. Well, that isn't what I had in mind. You'll have to get your father's permission. Oh, he'll give it. I know he will. Well, I'm sure he will, too. Now, Stumpy and I will go back to town from here so we can get our trail packs ready. And you can call me at home this evening so I can fix your pack, too. That'll be fine. All I'll need to bring is my rifle, I guess. Right. But you ain't bringing it for killing three toes. Aren't you going to shoot him? Nope. We're going to capture him. Be poor sportsmanship to shoot a tired old cat like three toes. You bring your rifle for self-protection. You know, at first I was surprised you weren't going to shoot him. Now I'm glad. It isn't every day a fella gets to see a master hunter and a tracker capture a cougar. Don't forget, sonny. And Mr. Three Toes has had a lot of lessons on how to keep from getting captured. Some of them he learned from me. I just hope I ain't run out of lessons. Boy, that sure was a good supper. Was I ever hungry. It's your last hot meal for a while, Ellis. It is. Yep, we eat cold meals from here on. The cat is still traveling north, so we can chance the fire, but when we find these circling, then the cat and mouse game is on. Wow. Sure am glad I'm not old three toes. Don't feel sorry for him, young feller. Nope, not a little bit. How come? Let me educate you on the critter we call a cougar a mountain lion. Now my ears are wide open. You'll see a lot of cougar signs, but uh, normally you won't see the cat. You can travel for days and not see him. But he'll see you. Boy, that gives me goosebumps. And duck bumps. <laughs> Don't argue with him on that point, Ellis. <laughs> okay. Tell me some more, will you, Stumpy? And now this feller's called a mountain lion, cougar, painter, panther, and a few other local names. He's a feline, and he's as smart and cunning and crafty as they come. Usually weigh about 220. The old three toes comes bigger. In the neighborhood, uh, 280 to uh, 300, unless he's been on a diet. And he grew about nine and a half feet from nose to tail, unless he shrunk. <laughs> By the signs we saw in the past here, I don't think he's done either. Ellis, cover the fire. Okay. I is that him? Three toes? Keep your voice down. Got ears like a cat. Sorry. Where is he anyway? Shh. Use your ears, not your mouth. Yes, sir. Uh, keep the lad here, Bill. I'm going out to have a look see. Bill? He didn't make a sound when he left. Not a single sound. How's he do that? Years of practice. Stumpy is a veteran hunter and woodsman. Well, what's he gonna do out there anyway? He's going out there to listen. To listen? You mean he can hear that there, Cougar? Yeah, stop again. <laughs> Ellis, your hair is standing on end. You're telling me it is. Wow. That makes my blood turn to water. The old timer guessed right. What do you mean by that? Stumpy went out over there, and I believe the cat is on the opposite side. I is he upwind from three toes? Yeah. He, he's getting closer. Sit back to back with me. I don't want you shot or hurt if that fella decides to make things exciting. Y you mean he'll attack us? I thought they wouldn't attack a man. And this one might. Stumpy's pushing him pretty hard. The wind's changed and Three Toes knows he's being stalked. He even remembers Stumpy's scent. I'll keep a sharp eye and let me do the shooting. We don't want a wounded cat on our hands. Do something. Can you do something? 
Here comes Stumpy now. Looks like he's hurt. Get the lantern going, Ellis. Okay. That cat's gone off his rocking chair. He got what he came for, believe you me, he did. I ain't backing off from the likes of him. I hear you, you old killer. You and I ain't done yet, not by a long shot or not. As soon as I get my arm tied together, I'm coming after you. Wow, look at your arm. Think nothing of it, sonny. I've had worse. This ain't nothing compared to when I was really hurt. Stop jumping around so I can bandage your arm, Stumpy. Man, he sure worked you over with his three-toed paw. <laughs> yeah, did a pretty good job with only three claws, even if I do say so myself. Stumpy, your knife's all bloody. Yep, I gave that fella something to lick while he's waiting for me. What happened out there? Well, we come face to face, stalking each other. Then we looked each other over, and I thought, sure, he'd back off. When he got my scent, I guess he remembered that I'm the boy who caged him, and he decided no more of that. Wow, we. What he's telling you, Ellis, is that old Three Toes has gone insane. Isn't that right, old friend? I sure am sorry, Stumpy. Now you'll have to shoot him, won't you? Yep. It's about the size of it, young feller. Three toes is so old he can't catch his food. He's so hungry he's gone crazy with man heat. I sure hate to have to shoot him. Almost like shooting an old friend. Why's that? Don't you fellas shoot animals unless you absolutely have to? Well, the animals of our forests and mountains are part of the Lord's creation, Ellis. He made them for a purpose. Each and every one of them. When man tampers with the balance of nature, he gets into trouble. The forests and mountains are part of the animal's home. We're the invaders. Nowadays, with tranquilizer guns and air transport, we can move the animals if they get dangerous and come a nuisance. It won't be long before all of the big game will be extinct, unless we protect them from thoughtless men with fast triggers. The Lord put them here for a purpose, and it's our job to keep them from being wiped out. Boy, that, that sure puts a different light on things. Stumpy, how did you plan to catch three toes anyway? Easy there, boy. That arm's a wee bit tender. I'm sorry, old timer. You've got to get it clean. Ellis, I plan to corner the old rascal and rope him. Hog time. Take him out by helicopter. That would have taken some doing. Can't you still do it? Not a chance. Any wild animal going insane becomes twice as dangerous as it was. Besides, all three toes is wounded. Now I'm beginning to feel bad about it, just like you do. There you are, Stumpy. All tied up good as new. How's it feel? I ain't got time to worry about it. Let's catch 40 winks, we'll be off at the crack of daylight. Boy, he hasn't gone any further in his last scream. Maybe he's resting up for the second round. Yep. That cat has one thing on his mind now, and that's to kill us. Now, young fella, you listen close and you listen good. Your life may depend on it. Yes, sir. But I feel safe with you two experts. I wasn't going to tell you this, but I guess I have to. Huh? All three toes is probably after you. Me? Yeah, that is, until he and Stumpy tangled. You see, you're the shortest of the three of us, Ellis, and he considered you his target. Old cougars have attacked smaller people, and you're a little on the short side. Wow, I never dreamed. Then, Stumpy, that's why you left the camp. You knew all about this. I guessed it. Now you listen close and good. Yes, sir, I, I sure will. Stay between Bill and me, no matter what happens. If things get sudden hot and exciting, fall on your stomach and cover the back of your neck with your hands. You better do it or you'll be dead. Keep your eyes peeled, boys. I figure we're getting close. How close? About a mile, maybe less. I see him. I see old three toes. Huh? Where? Where? About a quarter mile straight away up on the ledge. I can see his head just at the edge up there. 
Ellis, I believe you're letting your imagination play tricks on you. No, sir. Just follow my point. I see where you're pointing, Sonny. Let me take a look up there through my scope. Great day in the morning. He's right. You sure are, Ellis. You sure are. Look at him lying there, ready to pounce from the ledge. Well, we'll fix his wagon. Come on. We'll circle and come in on the side of the ledge. We'll give Mr. Three Toes a little surprise party. <laughs> There he is, just as big as life, watching over that ledge, ready to pounce on us. Keep your position now, Sonny. This is for real. He'll turn and charge like a thunderbolt any second. How much closer are you going to get? Just a little wee more. You'll hear us now for sure. Better shoot him now, old friend. You'll never know what hit him. Sorry, Bill, but I've got to give him a fighting chance. Okay, but don't miss. Stop! Don't, don't go any closer. He must be deaf. Nope, young fella. He's dead. <laughs> what a way for an old warrior to go. Maybe it's better this way, old-timer. Your knife must have mortally wounded him. Looks like he laid down here to set his trap for us and, and quietly slipped away. Stumpy, I sure am awful sorry. I know you are, young feller. Things ain't gonna be the same with him gone. Yeah, he won't kill no more sheep or calves or nothing. That's true. That ain't what I had in mind. Huh? Him and me used to have such good times together, trying to see who's the smartest. <laughs> they don't raise cougars like him anymore. And that's the story of all three toes, boys and girls. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Thank you.